G'day folks, MBS here again. Uh, look, today I'm going to do a review on the uh, engine guard. It's an overheating engine alarm for your cooling system and uh, it works on a totally different principle to what uh, we're all used to. Uh, up till now, 99% uh, of vehicles measured water temperature uh, to um, check the uh, temperature of the engine and you had all sorts of gauges. Look, if you've seen my gauge video, I've covered it, covered it all. We started off with a light, then we went to a sweeping gauge, but no numbers. Aftermarket started to produce, and even OEM started to produce a few uh, gauges with actual numbers on them to tell you the actual temperature and degrees uh, and the actual oil pressure. Uh, so um, big advancements there, but this new one, um, measures cylinder head temperature, metal temperature, okay? Um, I think that's an interesting concept, and I'm sure that uh, later technologies now, uh, electric vehicles are probably using temperature sensors because there's no water going through an electric motor, is there? So they've got to measure the temperature of the engine uh, somehow, or the motor. Uh, so they would use these sorts of gauges. Now, uh, I'm going to be fitting this to a Toyota Coaster, uh, 1HZ diesel, that'll be a good, a very good tryout for it because the last thing I want is to be travelling around Australia and uh, stuff my engine up because it overheated and I didn't pick it up on the gauge. Now I've got full instructions in here, how to fit it, everything's there, pretty easy to fit, there's only um, four or five wires um, and of course the main one that bolts onto the uh, cylinder head somewhere, we'll work that out where we're going to put it, probably up near the thermostat housing somewhere, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, right here, at long last, I've fitted the engine guard up to my coaster. Now I've got it temporarily mounted, just here, sitting here in the ashtray. Uh, I'll go for a test drive up the mountain range up here in Townsville, up the high range, and uh, we'll focus the camera down on the gauge. But I'm not going to do the whole trip, it's like four or five minutes for me to get up there, I would believe. So I'm just going to take little snippets of the temperature as it climbs up, and uh, we'll see what it gets to, and uh, see what we'll go from there. I'll do my evaluation after the run. Well, there you go. That was fun. I just made it back with a bit of luck. The, uh, the little trip up the uh, mountain range turned out to be a 350 kilometer trip. <laughs> we, we ended up deciding to go out the Charters Towers through the back road and back again. But on the way back, the alternator packed it in and uh, had all sorts of dramas, wondering what the hell it was. Uh, but we got back. Um, and uh, I had no temperature gauge uh, coming back except for the um, engine guard. So I just kept an eye on it on the way back, make sure we didn't overheat. My opinion of the engine, engine guard, it did the job very well. Um, I'm very pleased with it and uh, I'm going to permanently install it um, once I replace my alternator uh, and get that going again. All right. Pros and cons. Well, the only con would be if you watch the digits too much, yeah? The, it behaves differently to a water temperature gauge. Like, uh, as I said earlier, this is a metal temperature gauge. Um, so there is differences. And um, it might surprise you how the differences occur. Sometimes the metal's hotter than the water, sometimes the water's hotter than the metal and um, there's a, a lot of physics involved in it but we won't go into that um, but take that as being normal now um, as you saw my cruising on this run was 80 uh, before I hit the hill and then it reached 90 when I got to the top I, I'll tell you the truth I've already done this run um, 
last week, uh, but the video didn't come out. And that week it was 77 at the base and 85 at the top. Um, but it was much cooler then, so ambient temperature of the day does affect your temperature of your engine, um, how, uh, how hot it gets. All right, uh, so no big deal. Um, I'm going to set my set point now that I know that I've got up to 90. I think I might set it at 90 actually, because uh, that was, um, or 92. I think 92 would be good, because uh, as summer comes along, I may have to readjust that, okay, depending on the temperature. Uh, the ambient temperature of the, um, you know, of the day. Up here it gets up to about 38. Today it was about 30, uh, 30, 31. Um, when I tested it the first run it was only about 25. So uh, that would compensate for the difference. Alright, but um, it was reliable. It's what I expected. I expected the uh, temperature to go up as I went up the range as I would expect the water temperature to go up going up the range. However, the temperature gauge in, on the original did not move. I doubt if it moved a, a needle width. I couldn't, I could hardly tell that it actually moved. So 10 degrees and let's say the needle did move half a needle width. Uh, so very unresponsive, okay, your original temperature gauge. So I found that the digital gauge of the engine guard, um, it was accurate of course, um, but it's kind of scary to know that it went up 10 degrees um, when your temperature gauge has hard, hardly even moved. Uh, so you've got to get that out of your mind, okay? Forget the, the differences between water temperature and metal temperature. There is going to be differences. Uh, if you can get your head around that and forget about that actually, uh, just fit the engine guard, go out for a run, take it up a hill, re it'll record the highest temperature that you've reached when you get back to your, back home. All you've got to do is, uh, using the menu buttons, check out what your highest temperature actually got to and set it a few degrees higher. Um, now they recommend don't go five de more than five degrees. and. Uh, I agree with that 100%, uh, but I'm going to set mine probably about 2 or 3 degrees up above, so 92, 93. Um, the thing you have to understand is, when is an engine cooked? Okay, When have you overheated your motor? It's, it's not water temperature related. No, 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 it's metal temperature. Okay, When you cook an engine, generally you cook them when there's no water in it. Yeah, the water's escaped and the metal gets too hot. So it's really the metal temperature that governs whether your engine is overheated or not. Now, I don't know if you knew, but engine reconditioners stick this little blob of lead on the back of your cylinder head or the back of the engine block when they recondition them. And that tells them whether you've cooked your motor or not. Like if you're gonna try and claim warranty and you take it back and say, your motor's stuck, mate, it's no bloody good. First thing they'll do is look at that little lead pellet at the back, and if it's melted, they'll just turn around and tell you you've cooked it, mate. No warranty. All right? And that little lug on the back is set at around about 115, 120 degrees. All right? So when your metal gets that hot, you can technically say you've cooked your motor. Yeah? All right? So if, if for instance, I'm going to set mine at 92, 93, something like that, um, when that buzzer goes off, I've got plenty of warning to do something about it. All right, and that's the beauty of it. The temperature gauge probably wouldn't pick up uh, your warning that early. It would still be sitting halfway or th maybe even three quarters, maybe. In this vehicle, it didn't. Even though my temperature went up 10 degrees, it still recognized on normal temperature. So um, that's about the basic difference. Uh, so what we're really what this engine guard really is doing, as you know, engine metal temperature. So that would be a more accurate indication to you whether you're overheating your engine or not. All right. So if your gauge goes off, like just say I set this at 90 and it went off going up the range like today, um, I'll look at my temperature gauge just to make sure that it has, hasn't overheated. And uh, just as a backup, 
um, you wouldn't discard the temperature gauge totally, but between the two of them, you'll be able to say, well, I'd believe the metal guard myself. Uh, if the engine overheated, I'd believe it more than I would the temperature gauge, honestly. The, um, to have 10 degrees difference and not even notice it on your gauge, pretty slack. So uh, I don't know what the real temperature would be if the gauge ever got to three quarters and oh, heaven forbid if it ever got to the red line right at the top, I wonder what that temperature is. That would be already too late, all right? So uh, as far as standard gauges go, I reckon they're a piece of crap really, you know? It's the gauge of the era, isn't it? Back in the old days, you had the light, you had the ga uh, sweeping gauge, but you had no digits. Then they came out with the digits and tell you the actual temperature, uh, but still, this is a lot better to know the metal temperature than it is the water temperature and it'll give you a, a pretty good indication whether you're overheating. So if you end up setting your alarm at 90, 95, you've got plenty of time to do something about it before it gets to 100, 105, 110 etc and oh yeah, that's the end of that. Alright, so uh, I like it in that respect, very much so. Um, so, what else? Yeah, I can't think of anything else really. The, um, when fitting it, all I had to do was uh, cut a little bit of the heat shrink off the sensor uh, lug. It was covering, not covering the eye eyelet, but covering some of the area where the bolt actually touches the uh, eyelet. And uh, so when I screwed it in the first time, it was actually um, touching against that heat shrink. So I end up trimming a little bit off so I'd get full metal contact on the head of the bolt. And that's the only thing I had to do to it. Another beauty was that it's a 12, 24 volt operation. So you can fit it to a coaster or a 24 volt vehicle without any modifications. Uh, man, what can I say? Excellent, good product. Now back, um, obviously these things have been around for a long, a long time, not this particular model, I think he might have been out for a few years now, but um, back in the day, even in the 90s, there, there would have been temperature sensors on electric motors, gearboxes and transmissions in the industrial field. Uh, so all he's taken, done is taken it from that industrial field and put it into the automotive field. All right. I'd say he's probably one of the first to actually do that. Um, well, apart from Tesla, maybe they would have had a temperature sensor on their electric motors uh, when they first came out. But uh, for a vehicle that's running water as its norm, uh, this would be excellent to fit it as an extra on top of your normal gauge. Uh, so you get a real good indication of what's going on. And uh, I think it's worth its weight in gold. Uh, good insurance, peace of mind, okay. Uh, I had no worries going up the range with it, although I kept an eye on it. Uh, I still have yet to set that set point of 9092. Uh, once I've done that, I will totally relax when I'm driving my bus, knowing that I'm going to get an alarm when I've exceeded that temperature. And, uh, gives me opportunity to do something about it and not catch it too late like you will with a normal analog gauge. By the time the gauge has gone up and come back down and you missed that little bit, uh, you've started to cook your engine and too late. And uh, I made lots and lots of money out of overheated engines, repairing them and replacing them um, because the owner missed that uh, little uh, telltale sign, the gauge going up and then coming down again. Uh, if you miss that, it, oh well, you've cooked your motor. Uh, not, not the customer's fault, you can't be sitting there watching the gauge all the time, easy to miss. So uh, I advocate any gauge that has got a warning buzzer and it comes on early enough and it's set correctly, uh, has got to be better than the old style gauges that are currently in the market from the year two, oh, even 2005 backwards. Uh, so yeah, well worth the investment. I'll throw up this guy's website. You can go and uh, check out his website. I'll throw up a phone number as well for you. You can actually have a talk to him and, and get some advice from him. There are many options to this gauge. 
uh, that he's got. So you can check those out as well on his website. Um, I just got the uh, 01 EG model, one, one sensor, one gauge. There are multiple sensors you can get as well. Although I'm not a multiple uh, gauge man, I like to have one gauge, one sensor. Personal preference. All right, um, I'll crack now and replace my alternator and uh, hope you enjoyed the review.